Right, boys. Cheeky little number here. This is uh, Bruni and his team put these. Um, there's one either side of the track, little beam he crosses. So they time their own little short sections um, where there might be a little bit of a line option. And Bruni, he'll ride one line one time, then another line just to see which is fastest. And he shares a bit of info with Loris now and again, which is good for us, but um, I don't think he gives it him all. But not a bad little timing system, we might get one. Yeah, this uh, fast section here, you come in from like all the open top turns into the first bit of wood, really. And um, it's quite a blind sort of crest that you come over really fast and they, they put gravel down coming into it, which is a little bit weird. Um, Loris, last practice run yesterday, just washed out on that gravel a little bit and ragdolled down this little section. Um, I think he rang his bell a little bit and got a couple of grazers. So he set out rest of practice and hopefully feeling a lot better today. So just leaving this corn here, we have the lesser spotted Bruni's Minions. They're the guys that are putting the timing on track and timing him through little sections, then reporting to the pits on the phone. Um, <clears throat> they're off now to put those little blue timing things somewhere else, so we'll go down and check out where, the, where they're at. You have split, every rider reacts differently to different sort of information, so Bruni loves information. He loves ticking every tiny little thing off. Um, Whereas like I was always like, I know how I was feeling on my bike. I knew where I was like fast. Yeah, so there's Loris. Little Loris looking uh, like he's settling in again after his crash yesterday. We've got a little line option here. Um, when we walk the track, there's a tight line by that. It's got a number 12 post there. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's real sort of tight inside line. Um, outside line sort of comes in and it, it kicks a little bit and then you have to jump to a backside and then turn into a left but the inside quite a few people tried it but I don't think it really worked you have to commit and pull up so you get backside further down and then then you take all the sting out of it rather than your bike getting like unsettled through it there's not a ton of lines on this track now like this this whole wood is like there's, there's so many catch berms, so it's a bit annoying for me, to be honest, because a natural wood like this is really cool. They put all these berms in and like catches and stuff, so it makes the overall speed of the track good, which is good for spectators and good for TV and stuff like that. But for me, I like to see the technical side of a track and, and riders having to work to get round trees over off camber routes and stuff like that. Uh, last time we raced, I think Worlds, it wasn't on this track, it was a little bit further over that way and it joined into this track a, a bit further down. Um, definitely more tech, like a lot more natural, a lot more tech, so uh, you'd have to get slowed down so that you could get round a tree, over some off camber routes and then back, back across more stuff. Now they just seem to like cover those routes up and put a catch berm there so it makes overall speed, speed higher really. Yeah, Gregory! Solid. Yeah, I think they're, they're puzzling a little bit between like, cut shorties really, because it's, it's, it's so dry, this is cutting up a lot. Um, now there's a nice like dark groove in the dirt, but when it comes to qualifying, you have 30 second gaps and the sun's beating down on it, it gets even drier on top. Um, so I think the main thing for like choosing cut shorty would be to get get your braking done quicker. Yeah, that's true. Like top of the track and and down down bottom. <laughs> Saved it. Do you need a cuddle? Do you need a cuddle this morning? Come on, let's have a cuddle. Let's have a fucking cuddle. I'm sending mayhem to world's wedding and he's fucking. Come on, Mongo. He's gonna regret it. Oh. He's gonna regret it. No. Uh, Why are you putting on fucking cologne? There's a downhill. Uh, Why are you got deodorant on? I have a little sh De you, you fucking need to, need to learn about <laughs> deodorant, mate. <laughs> Tricky respot, this. Hey, like, I think it's, it's good here. Up here. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get Rob Roscop up here today. He's, he's down in Morzine, but 
He just sent me a, uh, a message. He's riding plenty lift. Where's plenty? Few options coming in, yeah, big off camber straight and you can jump quite high to set up for like an outside, outside, but there's a, a little middle bit that's not got a very good catch on it. Or you can set up a little bit and go like tight inside. For me, there's a, there's a that left hand corner there is real slow and there's not, no way of like hammering around it. So I'd prefer to use the shortest line to get to there because you're not going to go too fast around that corner anyway. That's the inside, like inside, hard on the brakes here so you get set for that left turn. Looking good. Nice little scrub there then. He like bounced on and then kept it low. He's really good at that sort of stuff. Definitely building his confidence from week to week. Having that like in injury at first is a bit sucked for him. Definitely held him back a little bit, but the, everyone's stepped it up so much this year. And he's on their pace, but he's just building back into it. I think he just needs that one result to give him a bit more confidence and know that he's on those, those guys' paces. So hopefully this week, better things. Yeah, Gregory! Old school. Greg's good round these ones. Yeah. What does it take to a grass corner good? It takes being older than about 28, maybe? Right. Yeah, this sort of turn for me, like I'd, I'd go off that jump and I'd jump all the way out to the tape, set up quite wide. Here's Mick Hanna. He'll show you a bit of classic old school style. Yeah, he pretty much did exactly as I said then. He's good at that stuff, isn't he? Yeah, he set up and then just held it in. Yours look good though, foot out, kicked up some dust there. Well, they're, they're mm. two wheel drifters, mate. Love them. Just hold them. Hold them in it. Don't be scared. Don't touch the brakes. Basically, what, what Mick did then, he stayed out to the tape, set up a little bit, dug his tyres in hard to get like on the edge of his tyres early, and then just assume the position as Lucas said and and hold it and he he actually held a little bit tighter than anybody else coming out at the end because he'd done quite a bit of his turning early on. Right, Eddie. Yeah. yeah Eddie! Yeah, it's, it's Matt Walker, not Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Lewis! Another big long grassy corner, you're just on the edge of your tyres. Well, Loris had it pretty good there, just cut over those little poles a little bit. Coming, coming down to a certain corner. What corner? <laughs> yeah, I always get a weird feeling when I get to this bit of the track. Don't know, don't know if anyone remembers or if anyone's seen it or not, but Back in 2004 there was World Championships on this hill and um, <clears throat> I felt really good. I'd just come off a broken collarbone actually, it was first race back but I'd, I'd been riding for a few weeks and felt really good, felt really strong. Qualified fastest, um, quite easily, felt good on track all weekend. Got to my final run, was nailing everything, loved it, hauling ass. Um, didn't know I was up on time but apparently when I got to this last road gap like here I was about three seconds up on Fabian who was leading at the point at that time. Finish line is just down there, you can see it from here. And uh, I did this this little stream gap, bounce, set up for the next corner and the track had actually deteriorated a little bit and some roots had come out on a turn. I'd never had a problem with that turn all, all weekend, I'd been railing it and uh, <clears throat> I just cut a root on the front end it spat the front end out a little bit and I spun round, had a big crash. Um, yeah, I was, I was absolutely good. It's one of the first times I went and climbed in the back, I was riding for Orange at the time, climbed in the back of the van, closed the door, cried my eyes out, had a, had a moment with myself and uh, came back out, and drank a few beers and felt better, but 
that really that really played on my mind for a long time like it, it was mine I'd got it I'd won it and I did a dickhead move down the bottom here but um, luckily winning in Canberra in 2009 definitely helped me forget about this one a little bit but yeah it was, uh, it was here we jumped that gap bounced up onto the top of this I'm pretty sure there was like another there was another tree so it went a little bit wider and it was down like this little bit here so yeah, I, I basically spat out down here and then got back on my bike and then there, was, there was a road gap where the road gap is now that I barely made it over I had to like hook and pull over it just to get down to the finish line grass is a bit moist over there from how much I cried after crashing there Thank <laughs> you.